Right guys, Gaft is back with another crazy card trick. Now I showed you the um, telepathy gimmick that hides in the deck. We've got another one, but it's hiding in the pad. Somebody reminded me that I've got one in a pad. So I thought I've showed you the card, I might as well show you the pad. So you are going to need some of this magic slate material and you're gonna stick it on the back page of a pad, which looks like this, like a ring binder pad. This is only a cheap pad but the grammage of the paper, it's not thin. It's quite a thick paper, so you haven't got to worry about whatever they write sort of transferring onto the next page and then that being the way you can see it. So you've got a hard backed pad with your gimmick all over the back of it. What I've also got is these two first pages. These first two pages of the pad have been trimmed about a millimeter off the end of each side so that it's going to work similar to the size stebbing stack um, the Sven deck. When they pick a page up, they're only going to pick the page you want, not these two. And then you've got a deck set up in any stack that you can remember the location of every card. This is the Bart Hardin stack. Right, how it's going to work is you're going to ask your spectator to think of a card. Um, in fact, I want you to commit to this card. So if you could write it down for me. So you're going to take your pad. You're going to now. It's hard to show you from this camera angle, but you're going to lift up the front and spin it round and close it. Um, in the real world, the spectator will not see this piece because it should be covered. As you open the pad, it will be covered with your hand. You might see a little flash on this camera because of the angle, but in the real world, it's going to be like this. They won't see that. And then you're going to take the first two pages, turn them over and then get a third page, fold it over and then turn the pad round and get them to write on here whatever card they're thinking of. So in this case, we're going to go for the Queen of Clubs. Bearing in mind when you get them to write whatever, I've done this in the past and some people have such tiny writing. It doesn't transfer too well when it's small, right? So just get them to write something like this. And because you've got those two short pages, when you get them to pull this up and rip it off, they should not lift up these two and expose your gimmick. So you're gonna get them to write it, rip this off, fold it up, and then give you the pad back. Or you could get them to close it if you want. But you can see there is no imprint of the Queen of Clubs on the paper because it's quite thick. You'll then close up the pad They've got this written. There's no way you can know what they've written, but I'm going to just, I'm going to write something in the pad as well. So you'll do exactly the same thing. You're going to open it up, but as you open it to you, you can see it says the Queen of Clubs. Quick glimpse of it. Turn the top two pages over again, a third page, and then just write down whatever number it needs to be. Now I'm going to not write on the pad, I don't want to spoil another page, but in the real world I would write 21 down. You would then rip off this page and show them what you've written. Once you've done that, fold your pad over, stick it in your pocket, get all the heat off this pad. Right, you thought of a card in the deck and I've written a number down, 21. I'm going to deal down to the 21st card. I'm going to Push these off like this, guys. I don't want to disturb the stack. 21. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Now, I've no idea what you wrote down, but let's just have a quick look, shall we? They wrote the Queen of Clubs, and the 21st card is, in fact, the Queen of Clubs. I'm not gonna go over the Bart Harding stack. I'll put a link in description to the stack itself and a trick, but that's how it works. You've got your nice little pad. I think this was about pound fifty. It's not expensive, but it needs to be one of these type of ring binders so you can fold this over. Once you've used your gimmick, you just pick up the foil, clear it away, and you're ready to go another day. So like I say, the first two pages are trimmed a little bit purely because when they're going to rip this page off, they are going to pull up this page only and not these other two and expose the gimmick. If you're a bit concerned about them 
um, closing the pad back up, just get them to give you the pad. So that's always it guys, it's that children's magic slate on the back of a cheap pad. Wants to be a hardback pad and preferably if you can find a pad which is thickish paper so it, the, the writing doesn't transfer onto the next page, that'd be awesome. So comment, subscribe, like guys and come back tomorrow for another card trick. Cheers.